Hello, and welcome to Chem 1113 Lab. Today, we're going to be doing the Technique Lab for 1113. I'd like you to be my lab partner. We're going to follow along with the procedure that's been given. There are a couple of things that I'd like to highlight. Please use units at all times. Uh, the numbers in the parentheses, uh, such as two or all or four, are the number of significant figures that your value should be recorded to. And please, these burette readings and the pipette readings, they're very accurate. Do not go by the readings on the beaker. These are just generalized markings that they put on at the factory. And we are going to record both the burette and the pipette to the hundredth of the mil milliliter. And if you need to review how to read those pieces of equipment, there is a video about that. So our first step is we're going to normalize our 50 milliliter burette. Again, signifying a clean burette is an upside down burette, tip up with the stopcock open. We're going to remove it from the burette clamp, close the stopcock, and then we will add maybe 5 or 10 milliliters of the solution that we are going to be using. Today we're going to be using DI water. And then you'll just kind of roll the burette, coating all the surfaces. And then we will drain all that solution through the stopcock. So the stopcock and the tip also get coated with that solution. Since it's DI water, it's okay to put this to the drain. But you can refer to the lab manual every time uh, that we uh, need you to put something to waste and we'll tell you where it goes. When we're done with that, we're going to close the stopcock and put the burette back in the burette clamp. I've got a burette funnel here, and I've also got a larger beaker of DI water. And I'm going to fill the burette over the zero mark. Then I am going to drain the burette below the zero mark, and it doesn't really matter where. Today I'm going to drain it between the zero and the one, just so that we coat and fill the tip of the burette. Now we're going to read this. Sometimes it's helpful to put a piece of white paper behind the burette and the readings kind of pop out. And if you're a little bit shorter like me, feel free to stand on the stool. Read it at eye level at the bottom of the meniscus. And this is about 0 0.28 milliliters. Our next step in the procedure says to fill a clean 250 milliliter beaker with about 100 milliliters of DI water. The next step in the procedure says to weigh a clean and dry 50 milliliter beaker. The balance reads zero. I'm going to open the door, place the beaker on the pan and close the door. Can you please read and record this in the data sheet? The next two steps in our procedure are normalizing a pipette and then delivering 10.00 milliliters of DI water 
from the amount that I put in the beaker originally to our 50 milliliter beaker. So to normalize the pipette, we'll insert the auto pipetter and draw liquid above the mark on the barrel. Again, don't draw it up so high that you get any liquid into the auto pipetter. And we're just sending this water to the drain. And our burette is now normalized. Now we're going to draw up water above that mark on the barrel lift the pipette out of the liquid and then press down on the top of the pipette here to get the meniscus the bottom of the meniscus on that line I've done that and now I should have exactly 10.00 milliliters delivered to my beaker. So why don't you record that volume in step seven? The next step in our procedure says to deliver approximately five milliliter of the water in the burette to the 50 milliliter beaker. Now, it doesn't make any difference that it's exactly five milliliters. It just needs to be approximately. We will read and record that accurately. So my initial reading was 0 0.28 milliliters. So I'll dispense, and I'm going to adjust this maybe a little bit so my tip's not so far above. I'm going to drain to between the five and the six mark. Okay, I'd like you to read and record this value. The next step in our procedure is to pipette another 10 milliliter aliquot from our stock solution to our 50 milliliter beaker. Since our pipette is already normalized, we don't need to normalize it again. You can draw the solution above the mark, lift it out of the solution and press down on the top or use the wheel to get the bottom of the meniscus on the mark above the barrel. The next step after this, it says to drain approximately 10 milliliters from the burette to the 50 milliliter beaker. We're in between the five and the six. Now I'm going to drain between the 15 and the 16. Again, it doesn't make any difference uh, ex that it needs to be exactly 10 milliliters because we are going to be reading and recording this accurately. I'd like you to read and record this value. Now our final step in this part of the procedure is to weigh and record the beaker with water in it. Our scale reads zero. Put it in on the balance pan, close the door, and I'd like you to read and record this value. 
The density formula is given in your data sheets. I would like you to calculate the density of the water. Be sure to include units in your answer. The last step in Part 1 of Technique Lab 1113 is to calculate a percent error. A percent error is a numerical value stating how far a value is from a known or published value. You can either express this as an absolute value or not. Sometimes not expressing it as an absolute value gives the direction that it needs to change to become closer to the known value. Let's look at the significant figures here. I'll give an example and you can calculate the percent error from the data we've collected. Let's assume we calculated 0.9688 grams per milliliter for the density of water. This, this is the experimental number and the theoretical number is given in the problem statement. In the top number that is calculated from the difference between the experimental and the theoretical is negative 0.0283. That has three significant figures based on subtraction rules. The bottom number has four significant figures. Therefore, the final answer should have three significant figures. The next step in our procedure, we're now in part two, is we are going to place a Bunsen burner underneath a ring with gauze. Now, before we heat anything up, it's always important to adjust all your equipment. As you can see, the barrel is of the Bunsen burner is way too far from this ring stand. So let's adjust this ring stand to maybe two or three inches above the top of the barrel of the Bunsen burner. The next thing it says is to place some water in a beaker and then place a thermometer in the water. All right, we can definitely see that this is too high. We will need to adjust the clamp so that the tip of the thermometer is in the water. And I'm going to add a little bit more water. We're going to be heating this up to boiling in a minute. There's lots of different ways that you can adjust this thermometer back and forth, the pitch, um, if you need to. All right, let's read this temperature. Sometimes, again, it's helpful if you put a piece of white paper behind it. And I'd like you to read the initial temperature of this water. The next step in the procedure says to light a Bunsen burner. So the first thing that we do is we turn everything off. You never know what the person before you was doing. So I've got everything off now and then I'm going to open both the gas valve and the air valve one full turn. I'm going to Connect it to my source, and then I'm going to turn on the gas so that the valve is completely parallel, and then I will light it. Let's adjust this flame now. It seems a little bit high, so I'm going to back it off a little bit. with the gas flow here. And then to make it a very hot and clean flame, 
we need that flame to be blue so that no yellow is in it. And then once we've done that, I'll place it underneath the water. Let's do part three while we're waiting for the water to boil. The next part we're going to be doing is part three while our water is boiling. We are going to read and record the barometer, which records the pressure in the lab. We're going to be reading the middle red scale, which is in millimeters of mercury, and the smallest divisions here are one millimeter of mercury. So that means we'll read to the one millimeter and then estimate to the tenth. So your final barometer reading should have four significant figures. Why don't you read the barometer for us? You can read the important information in the box to the right of the conversion factors. The conversion factors are all exact numbers which have an infinite number of significant figures. Therefore, the number of significant figures in a conversion will be dependent upon the number of significant figures in the barometer reading. I'll do an example conversion. One of the unit conversions we are not using in the technique lab is one atmosphere is equal to 1.01325 bar. I'll convert a pressure reading of 751.8 millimeters of mercury to bar using dimensional analysis. You can follow along with this slide. The final pressure will have four significant figures since the original pressure had four significant figures. Do not base the significant figures on the conversion factors. I'd like you to convert your barometer reading to what is asked for in the technique lab. I see that our water is now boiling. I'd like you to read and record the temperature of this boiling water and then complete the remainder of this part paying special attention to the significant figure help given in the parentheses next to each value. 